Good morning, dear students. Today we are going to revise this lesson. That is last lesson. This is lesson number one, and with the title is the last lesson. And let's revise this lesson so that we can cover up our things. Yes. So, what is the story of this lesson? Or what is the key point, the theme of this lesson? Understanding your own culture, your, you know, identity, your language, how much it is important, right? So, theme of the lesson, page number 11 in our NCRT book, if you see. Let me discuss the pain that is inflicted on the people of a territory by its conquerors. So, and by taking away the right to study or speak their own language, when you are being snatched of your own attributes, your own things, your culture, your language, your traditions, your ways of living, the pain that is inflicted on the people of a territory by its conquerors. So here, if you see this map, in this lesson which is given in the end, let me tell you this map that tells us that how, you know, this dotted part. So how Prussians, Germany, Conquered Alsace and Lorraine of France. So now the author is a was a French novelist and short story writer. The last lesson is set in the days of Franco-Prussian War, war times, and somebody is the loser, somebody is the winner, and how the losing ones, how they suffer, how they have to bear the burdens. Inflicted, and here what is happening? Uh, there, there are two characters. One is Little France and M. Hamel. What is this Little France is facing now? He's a carefree boy, careless boy, who is hardly uh, interested in going to school. So the lesson begins this way: I started for school very late that morning and was in great dread of a scolding, especially because M. Hamel had said that he would uh, question us on participles. And I did not know the first word about them. And every time they were the students, in fact, everyone in the village was not interested in studying at all or going to M. Hamel school. The only school, the primary school, the small school in the town. So they were more interested in chopping birds, seeing the woods, enjoying in the woods, going for fishing. And so when I passed the town hall, the crowd was there standing at the bulletin board. Dear students, this bulletin board is playing a big role in this lesson. Every news that has come from the side of Germans, the Prussians, they were called at the time, has come through this bulletin boards. Whether the losing of their own land, the conquering, the lost battles, the draft of orders from the commanding officers. And he thought, what is now? And he was rushing to the school in Park that there were a lot of people standing near the bulletin board. And he thought, and then he hurried away. And a voice he could hear from the back, don't go so fast. Bab, you'll get to your school in plenty of time. This is what they believe, that there's a lot of time. There's plenty of time to attend the school. But this was a very, very important thing that we can notice. I thought he was making fun of me. And he reached that little garden of M. Hamel, where the classroom is going on, on participles and on many other things. But when he entered there, there was silence. The general hustle bustle and uh, the sounds that used to come from the school to the street were not there today. The opening and the closing of the desk, the lessons repeated very loud, right? So they, they, they were not there today. Something was there which was different, it was strange, but now it was also still. 
I had counted on the commotion to get my get to my uh, way, uh, my desk without being seen. But of course, that day everything had to be quiet as Sunday morning, as if it was a Sunday morning. And when he reached there, he found everyone already seated. And M. Hamel's voice: "Go to your place, little Franz. We were beginning without you." I jumped over the bench and I sat at my place, my desk. Not till then, when I got to know there are so many people today in the class who did not attend the class any day, right? And M. Hamel was also dressed very nicely. You see, page number three, the last line. I see. Did I see that a teacher had on his beautiful green coat? When he had got a little over his fright and settled on his place, he found. That his teacher, M. Hamel, was wearing beautiful green coat and the little black silk cap, all embroidered that he never wore except on inspection and prize days. These were the clothes that he used to wear on special occasions, and he was wearing them today. Prize days were those days when he used to wear. The whole school seemed so strange and solemn. But one thing that surprised me most was what was that? The village people. What was most surprising? The question that what was the surprising thing for M. This uh, little Franz when he reached the class, he found the village people sitting quietly like ourselves. Old Hoser with his three-cornered hat, the former mayor, the former postmaster, and several others besides. Everybody looked sad. And Oza had brought the old primer thumbed at the edges. That he held it, uh, he had held it open on his knees with his great spectacles lying across the pages. It was all wondering. He, he kept on wondering about all these things. And M. Hamel's voice, dear students, please pay attention to that my children, this is the last lesson I shall give you. And he had published the truth that what is the day? Why there is so much of strangeness? There is eerie atmosphere in the classroom today. This is not generally. So the order has. Let me repeat. My children, you can underline in your books. My children, this is the last lesson I shall give you. The order has come from Berlin to teach only German in the schools of Alsace and Lorraine. The new master comes tomorrow. This is your last French lesson. I want you to be very attentive. I want you to be very attentive. For the thunder clap, these words were to me. Please underline there is a question. What do you mean by this expression? What a thunder clap, these words were to me. Okay? Now, what's surprising? What a thunder clap. That means very shocking, he felt. He felt shocking. Very strange surprise. Surprising, these words were to me. Oh, the wretches. That was what they had put up at the town hall. So this was the news that was placed on the bulletin board when I was coming to the school. What was mentioned on the bulletin board or what might have been there? So he understood now. My last French lesson, why? I hardly knew how to write. Now he realized those things you start realizing what are you losing. You have things you don't realize what are you going to lose. Once you start losing them, when he came to know that this was the last lesson, he understood that I have lost something and more is on the way to be lost. So, I hardly knew how to write French. I should never learn any more. I must stop there. Then, oh, how sorry I was for not learning my lessons, for seeking birds' eggs or going sliding on the sour. I look my books that had seemed such a nuisance a while ago. A heavy burden to carry. My grammar and my history of the saints were old friends now. Now I started all of a sudden liking my books. I started, uh, uh, the, I had aversion for them. I did not like them. Now they became my friends. And I am hammered through the idea that was going away. Put me into a shock. I should run, never see him again. And, maybe, and this made me forget all about his ruler and how cranky. Was how noisy, how strict, how uh, like a ruling person he was. 
poor man. It was in honor that he had put on his Sunday clothes. So I came to know the reason. Then he says, so the question, why did M. Hamill wear those Sunday clothes or those special clothes? Because it was his last lesson. Dear students, if we see, we, we start our lessons generally with the pick on the top of the lesson where the beginning is there. If you see here, there is a book. Book is, uh, book is a symbol of learning, knowledge. It symbolizes learning and knowledge. So here, the learning is going to stop. And that too in their own language. And he's, so his name now was called. It was my turn to recite something. And this is with the concluding part. Before we move on to this, we've already discussed that poor man. And it was in honor of this last lesson that he had put on his fine Sunday clothes. And now I understood why the old men of the village were sitting there in the back of the room. So one more question, why were the old men of the village, the mayor, the postmaster, and the other people, the old ones, were sitting in the classroom at the back benches to a way and sure, very much interested, keenly interested in studying today. And like other days, they had not gone to school or it was because they were sorry too that they had not taken care of the school and they had not even taken care of sending their children to the school. It was not a regular affair for them. Dear students, how much the school is important in our life? We can even learn from language books and literature books that we are reading. It was their way to thanking our master for his 40 years of faithful service. For 40 years, M. Hamill has been running the school. While I was thinking all of this, my name had been called. I heard my name called. It was my turn to recite. And when, it, when his turn came, he was actually in his musings and ponderings. What would I not have given to be able to say that dreadful rule for the participant all through? Very loud and clear and without one mistake. But I got mixed up on the first words and stood there holding on to my desk. My heart was beating and not daring to look up because I knew M. Hamill would scold me. I heard M. Hamill say to me, I won't scold you, little Franz. You must feel bad enough, but you must feel bad enough. Now, two people, the conversation is going on. This all is the backdrop. That what is happening in the backdrop is of war times when one country conquers the other one and the new rules and regulations are being imposed. Right? And it is the it is the forcible imposing of those new patterns and new things and new rules and regulations. I won't scold you, little friends. You must be bad enough. See how it, it is. Every day we said to our we have said to ourselves, we have discussed with ourselves. Right? What we have said to ourselves that uh, uh, I have plenty of time. I'll learn it tomorrow. In general, in our life also, when we keep the things for tomorrow, we all know that tomorrow never comes. There is no tomorrow when we leave the things for tomorrow. And now you see where we have come out. And that's the great trouble with Elsa is that she keeps the things for tomorrow. Right? So, we, we, need to, we need to leave a legacy for the posterity also. So what they have left, the villagers have left for the children. That school was not that important, that much important. So the children also picked up those friends and cuts. And now how they have come out, how they have come up with the things. So this is the trouble with Elsa. She puts off learning till tomorrow. You can underline in your books to your students. Very important line I feel that never to put learning till tomorrow. Now those fellows out there will have the right to say, how is it you pretend to be French men and yet you can neither speak nor write your own language? How come you can call yourself a Hindustani when you do not know how to speak Hindustani language or languages? Right? And how come you do not know how to write it? So the similar thing that she puts off learning till tomorrow and that has brought a disaster. They did not know how to write and speak French. And the Prussians will come. How is it you pretend to be Frenchmen and yet you can neither speak nor write your own language? But you are the worst, poor little France. We have all a great deal to reproach ourselves with. 
your parents were not anxious enough to have you learn they preferred to put you to work on a farm or at the mills so that they may have little extra money and i have been to blame also have i not often sent you what are my flaws instead of taking your class or instead of learning your lessons making you learn your lessons and when i wanted to go for fishing did i go on a sleeping or holiday have i not given you holidays whenever i wanted to go for my fishing i am also to be blamed is not blaming others and the villagers or the children it is also blaming yourself then from one thing to another then have went on to talk of the french language and the most beautiful language and logical language in the world and dear students please underline the most beautiful language in the world the clearest the most logical what are m hamel's views on french language discussed in the lesson so you can on the top of this page that i'm sharing page number 7 you can underline beautiful question i like this question and moreover it has come sometimes uh, or i don't remember the year but in exam that uh, what are m hamel's views about french language the most logical language in the world the most clearest the most beautiful language that we must guard it among us and never forget it because when people are enslaved why did he have such views because he believed his philosophy was such that people are enslaved as long as they go in fast when a people when a group of people when they are enslaved as long as they hold fast to their language it is as if they had the key to their freedom so your language your own language is somewhere the key to your freedom you you can open the locks of the prison and attain freedom if you hold on and if you love your language so if they had not loved their language prussians the germans would not have imposed german on them then he opened the grammar and read us a lesson i was amazed to see how well i understood today the previous lessons i never understood my lessons and he said seem so easy so easy all he said was so easy to i think too that i had never listened so carefully but today i was very careful and that he never explained everything with so much of patience today the scenario was different it seemed almost as if the poor man wanted to give us all he knew i hope you are able to understand dear students you can unmute and speak yes ma'am very good so shall i continue like i did yes, good it seemed almost as if the poor man wanted to give us all he knew before going away and to put it all into our heads at one stroke as if he wanted to give everything that he had right so after the grammar lesson they had other lessons in writing that they m have had new copies for us written in beautiful round handwriting round hand france elsays france elsays they looked like little flags floating everywhere in the school room and they were distributed as if a small um, same pattern um, cover or uh, book is like distributed in the class so hung from the rod at the top of a desk as if they were small floating uh, little flags floating everywhere in the school room and you ought to have seen how everyone set to work and how quiet it was even the young children the only sound the young children they were also very quiet and the only sound was the scratching of the pens on the paper you can make out now when you write a book paper with the pen and if it makes some noise only that noise could be heard and coming to the conclusion of the lesson before we come to the conclusion please underline the, the lines that i Uh, asking you to underline on the roof the pigeons cooed very low there were pigeons in the classroom and i thought to myself will they make them sing in german even the pigeons oh, what is the meaning of this line can we jobs make these pigeons can they make the pigeons can they make the pigeons sing in german what does this mean let us share this line and understand will they make Pigeons sing in German. Or who or who do they sing in German? Is it possible? 
Yeah, it means as these pigeons have a natural way of making sounds in their own way, they're cooing in their natural way. Similarly, French was their natural way of making it. As these Germans cannot impose their learning on these pigeons, so they even could not the French people. And will they make them sing in German even the pigeons? Question mark. As the pigeons have a natural way of going in their own way, they do have a way, and that is our own language that is French. Not force, as they cannot force the pigeon, so or similarly they cannot force us to. Whenever I looked up from my writing, I saw M having motionless today in his chair and gazing first at the one thing. Maybe he was captivating, he was collecting, gathering all the things which he would carry for as memories, right? Because he has to leave tomorrow, right? And he wanted to fix in his mind just how everything looked in that little school room fancy. For 40 years he had been with us in the same place in this garden outside the window and his class in front of him and beautiful and he has worked a lot on the creepers and plants and planted himself find that that find about the windows of the roof the hop vines the walnut trees that he had planted in these years for they must leave the country the next day and the, the people sitting in the classroom who were the moving of the trucks and the, the furniture on the top floor because they had to leave the country the next day. The point here is, if you want to break a country, if you want to spoil a country, spoil their education system. So here the Germans had stopped school. The Germans had forced them to close the school. And the teacher has been at attack. The, the country has been already conquered, and, or not the country, but the parts that Elsace and Lauren. And moreover, the next step is to close the school. So they had to leave or they must leave the country next day. Somewhere hidden we can understand that the system that was making them learn to stop. Now maybe a new system where German would be taught. So, but he had that's what the order from the Berlin had come. Another question what the order had come from Berlin, which little Franz has discussed that this was the last French lesson and German would be taught for them. He had the courage to hear every lesson to the very last, right? After the writing, he had a lesson in history and the babies chanted his bow and all. And down there at the desk, in the back of the room, the old desk, the back benches, the, the old people at the back desk, desk they were sitting, Hauser had put on his spectacles and holding his primer in both hands. Spell the letters, he was spelling and learning the letters and alphabets too. But never thought of coming to the school, was learning, trying to learn. You could see that he was crying, his voice was trembling. Emotion, his voice trembled with emotion. It was so funny to hear that it was a mixed sort of feeling for this boy. He was feeling as if to laugh on the person who was crying, the old man who was crying. But at the same time, he understood he was not so small, he was little trans, not so little now, now to the deep understanding uh, how well I remember it that last lesson. When he's spending, he has spent down his thoughts, he remembers, he goes back to that, uh, that feel, that emotion, that how well I remember that last day of the last lesson. All at once, the church clock struck 12. Then the angels, at the same moment, the trumpets of the pollution returning from the drill. And there was the sound of coming back to the pollution. See, in the morning they were going for the drill and they were sounding, sounding under their windows. M. Hamel stood up very pale in his chair. I never saw him look so tall. My friends, he said, I, but something choked him and he did not speak. And he just showed his gestures. He stood up and showed the class in his hand. And he said one line in French, live long France. We will have France. Right? It is mentioned in the last part of the lesson. So, live long 
uh, France, may you live long. There's a blessing, there's a wish. And then he turned to the blackboard, took out, a, took a piece of chalk and wrote on the board, live long, right? France. Then he stopped and leaned his head against the wall. Without a word, he made a gesture to us with his hand. School is dismissed. He couldn't speak. His throat was choked. But the real thing is his heart was choked. And he was getting collapsed from inside. His, his love for his language, for teaching, was now coming to an end. And especially in his own land, he was being maybe sent out. So I hope you've understood. Right? Dear students, you've understood this lesson. Now when we talk of the questions, the question answers of this lesson in CRT, we need to prepare and uh, let me share. Now there are small, small questions in between also. What changes did the order from Berlin cause in the school that day? How did France feelings about M. Hamelin school change? We can go through them. Now, very important. See, when people are enslaved, enslaved, as long as they hold fast to their language, it is as if they had the key to their prison. Example. Uh, can you think of examples in history? So this is, you just need to elaborate. That when people are enslaved, enslaved they have the key to their prison. Explain with reference to the lesson. And will they make them sing in German. Once this question has come in three marks and once this question has come in six marks, we need to prepare that what does this mean and how here it is applicable figuratively. Right? Literal meaning that will they make them, no, no one can teach the animals and uh, pigeons and birds this way, that they'll uh, make the sounds in, uh, in uh, German language or in French language or in Spanish language. There, there's a question, there's a satirical question. The meaning is that they cannot force them to learn German forcibly. The people in this story suddenly realize how precious their language is to them. What shows this? Why does this happen? What shows this and why does this happen? Now, uh, the people in the story suddenly realize because they were found standing in the prison board and after that they were found in the classroom by the two parents when they teach them. Why does this happen? All of a sudden, they had come to know that now there will be no lessons in French and their country as if it has been conquered and already they had seen Prussian soldiers doing their drills and march past and marching in their town. So they have come to know now, step by step, what all will be snatched from them. So, why does this happen? Right? Then we have in between some questions. What was France expected to be prepared with for school that day? He was to prepare for uh, participles and all. What did France notice that unusual about the school that day? Everything was strange, silent. M. Hamel was in his particular special clothes. Right? What had been put up on the bulletin board? We have already shared that. And uh, if you see here, it's little lights that Germany and then Elsays and here somewhere Lorraine. When you open page number uh, six, you will see this. You will come to know. Right? So, dear students, I hope we have uh, understood this lesson. And small, small questions. If you have queries, you can ask. You can ask, dear students. Any query? No, ma'am. Understood? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. We'll continue. Maybe with some writing section, invitation, revision of some. So we have covered so many writing topics also. Right? Stay safe, healthy, fit and fine. Thank you. Thank you.